I think this is going to be the new backdrop for season five of my podcast, Behind the Glass. Still a work in progress though. Well, hello one and all, welcome to Seen Through Glass. Uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you would have missed that last week I went on holiday. Who knew that that was still a thing? I actually got on the plane and went to a hotel and had quite a few drinks and put my feet up and it was amazing. I do feel a little bit guilty that the first international trip of 2021 wasn't on camera, but me and more importantly my wife Vicky, we needed some time off and I think it's always important to rest and recharge the batteries. And don't worry, because I think international content is coming to this channel real soon. Keep all of your fingers crossed. Whether I do travel internationally or not, I'm not sure it really matters because it looks like the last four months of 2021 are going to be insane. It's very exciting and it's starting right here right now because I'm currently waiting for a Lamborghini Huracan Evo Spider to be delivered. I'm taking it on a kind of UK mini road trip next week. Then I've got to head into town for a meeting before this afternoon going to the London Concorde d'Elegance, hence the outfit. Then tomorrow morning I've got to wake up at the crack of dawn to head to Salon Privé, another very fancy car show, before then stopping off at Perla at Podium Place to pick up a load of scene through glass coffee because on Sunday morning I've got another huge live behind the glass podcast event. This one's like this non-stop chocker like this until mid-December, it's gonna be amazing. But I was stressing a little bit, thinking, well, when am I gonna have time to film like an introductory video to the Huracan? Thought, well, why don't I just vlog the next 36 to 48 hours, my first 36, 48 hours with the car and, and see what happens. Hey, hey. How are you doing, pal? Am I on? You're on. Oh, you look <laughs> fantastic. So, mate? Trunk. Where's my... Trunk. Uh, my school trunk. <laughs> How you doing? Fine, mate. Who's yeah, going to win uh, Sandport Grand Prix? Max Verstappen. That was quite intense, but perfectly timed because yes, here is the Lamborghini Huracan Evo Spider that I have the keys to for the next 10 days or so and I'm taking on a little UK mini road trip next week. I've spoken quite a bit over the last year or so, especially on the podcast, about the fact that I think Lamborghini might be the last true big supercar company. We're going to talk about it more in the, in the next video during the road trip, but quite excited or at least I appreciate what they're doing. I've never been the biggest Lamborghini fan but I've spent a lot of time in Lamborghinis and now they excite me a lot more than some of their sort of rivals do and I've heard many good things about this latest version of the Huracan, the Huracan Evo and considering it's well sort of end of the summer, I mean it's grey skies, classic UK but I thought I'd get the spider just in case the weather was good and I could enjoy some sunshine. Let's see if that happens. But right now, I need to jump in this car, kind of learn it on the go, because I've got a meeting in Knightsbridge. So yeah, perfect kind of place. Well, not the perfect place, but a place where you are likely to see lots of other Lamborghinis and Huracans in Knightsbridge. So yeah, let's get cracking. Like I owe Huracan Evo owners a bit of an apology. I'd made an assumption about them all without really knowing the facts because, well, up until now, whenever I'd seen a Huracan Evo in London, it's always driving unnecessarily aggressively. Sounding amazing, but just a little bit too much. But now I'm realizing that might not be all of the owner's fault. Can we please notice or note 
the difference in the way this car sounds and behaves in Strada, as I am right now, and Sport. Listen to this. Do you hear those valves opening? Sport. Strada. Sport. Hi, right, mate. <laughs> yeah, not mine, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, pal. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't work at all, does it? <laughs> I was trying my best. Suits you. Oh, thank you so much. I don't think it does, but thank you so much. <laughs> I'd take the 360 over this. So would I. <laughs> but hey, you know, you've got to try different things every now and again. That's exactly it, mate. Vegas can't be choosers. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> As the man said, it's hard to not stand out in this car, especially in sport when it sounds like this. I mean, I'm going 20 miles an hour and I'm in traffic and all that's a nice 599. But it just is so shouty, it's brilliant, it's childish, but in the best kind of way. And now I understand why, if you own this car, you would drive everywhere in sport. Why wouldn't you? It just makes it so much fun. From the outside, I look like I'm compensating for something that's smaller than I'd want it to be. Uh, but in here, I'm like, yeah. I mean, that was, that was literally three miles an hour to 15, and it was the best 12 mile an hour acceleration I've ever done. Uh, also, two other things quickly. There is a cup holder. It's beautifully designed into the dashboard. Didn't know that. Great. Uh, and then thirdly, I was going to say, hard not to get noticed in these things, but the man on the cycle has already proved that. So thank you, kind man, wherever he's gone. Well, all parked up, ready for my meeting. So I reckon let's skip ahead and I will see you next when we get to Concours de Elegance. Well, welcome to the first of two very fancy car events I'm going to be attending this weekend. I always really like London Concourse because firstly it takes place at the iconic and stunning Hampton Court, but also has the world, it always seems to have cars that kind of surprise you. Take last year, for example, I walked in on the global unveiling of the Aston Martin Victor, a kind of 177 Vulcan annual V12 80s inspired hypercar. So yes, let's dive in and see what this year has to offer. That suits you far too much. It's amazing. You look very at home. I look very warm. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? It's Princess Grace's wedding car. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And I think you should always be like Princess yeah. Grace and ride in the back. <laughs> can you do us a Princess Grace impression away? I don't, I don't know. Very don't regal. So. Well done. Thanks. So to continue the theme of insane Aston Martins at London Concourse, check this out, the Aston Martin Bulldog. This car has such an incredible story, I actually need to bring in a friend to explain it. So, Richard, I'm using you. I'm Hi using there, you. use me at your discretion. You were trying uh, to give me information that I was then going to regurgitate, but I just didn't think I was going to do it, do it justice. So I'm going to use you to explain what an incredible car this is. Well, the older people like me might remember, it's actually before my time, but um, the 1980 Guinness Book of Records, this was the world's fastest road car at 191.8 miles an hour. What many people don't realise is that the only reason it was that speed was because they were still accelerating and it ran out of space. Oh my god, okay, so what could it or should it have done? 200. Okay. And that's 19... what we're going to do in November. Okay, With fair. Darren Turner, who's the chief test driver of Valkyrie, and he will do the runs in November and we will crack the 200, 40 years on, and hopefully close the book on a story that deserved telling. Unbelievable, because back then everything else was doing what, 180 or 170? Well, no, no, no. Well, no. Uh, our oh. Italian counterparts over with the raging bulls and the prancing horses were claiming all sorts of things, but no one was verifying it. This was Myra verifying 191.8. Um, so, yeah, we believe it can do it. We have no problem, and uh, we're going to go ahead and do it. Well, being a car from this era, it has many party pieces, which is now going to display very kindly because, yes, it looks insane, but it does lots of fun things on top of 200. Well, hopefully 200 miles, 200 an, hour. miles yeah. an hour. <laughs> oh my god, check out these doors! This is every kind of 
part the show pony that you want it to be. 1979, a concept car at the time. And, and designed kindly. obviously by William Towns, who designed the famous wedge shape Lagonda three years earlier. Which and wedge shape is a is a good way of explaining it. This has got a twin turbo V8 in it. Sounds absolutely insane. <gasps> oh, that was a little sneak sneak peek of one of the party pieces. Oh yes, the lights are one of the coolest elements. This is the coolest thing ever. And you may want, I think a lot of people will appreciate the stereo system. Oh, you're like in a jumbo jet. Oh my, hey, okay. would you do some blips if I go around the back? Yeah. unnerving I'll be honest <laughs> This is so cool! <laughs> and as you can see by the faces outside, it's a rather dramatic place and I'm just flashing the drop-down headlights for everyone. Oh, but it does, it, it does have a number of party pieces. We are so low. Do you know the height? 43 inches. Wow, okay. This is unreal. Thank you for the opportunity. And look at this, look at all the old dials and everything like that. It's so off -piece. We haven't had a chance to calibrate everything yet, but That's you know, we're here with the stereo works. It you know. looks the part, look at that stereo. And look I have those details. It's cramped in here. It's not the easiest space to film in, I'll well, be honest. I mean, but we're cramped apart from the fact that we could, you know. <laughs> There's a whole load of space here, but then not a lot of space anywhere else. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and a spare wheel. Practical as well, huh? And, you know, Aston Martin, genuine, the genuine pragmatism behind some of the choices is, is I think, fascinating because, um, you know, it, you know, other people weren't thinking of, you know, we well, yes, and we want space for this, and we want Stay to do this. Wheel, yeah. the the headlight height. The reason the headlights are there is because if they did decide to go ahead and make it a road car, they wanted it to be legal for the U.S. and that's why they are the way they are, um, because were they pop up lights right down in the bottom, they would be too low. So it's, you know, it's actually amazingly well thought out. Thank you very much. Great to see you. I appreciate you. it. Hopefully you now understand why I like that event so much. Uh, absolutely manic in there. Bumped into so many people I haven't seen in, well, like two years because of COVID or something like that. Uh, so great to catch up with so many of them, but also see so many amazing cars. And tomorrow we're doing it all over again. Uh, but we've got a bit more of a longer drive in the Huracan to get to Salon Privé out in sort of Oxfordshire. So more time to familiarise my, familiar myself with that car. So yes, I'll see you in the morning bright and early for more miles in the Huracan and another epic car event. It's a beautiful morning, it's a fantastic morning. Because this thing is, well, it's just all theater, isn't it? I mean, these huge gear panels, the way the car looks inside and out, the way it feels to drive a Lamborghini. And then this soundtrack. How Lamborghini can still make their cars sound quite so good and quite so loud, I don't know. It's brilliant, it's amazing. And as I hinted out at the beginning of the video, it's what makes them really the last true supercar manufacturer. This is a supercar through and through. I am picking up on a few dynamic things which I'll come back to, but right now I'm about to arrive at Stalon Privé. Look, there's another supercar, the GR Yaris, and the 650S Spider. There seems to be supercars everywhere. I think it's going to be a very busy morning at Stalon Privé, which will be great, but I've just been up early enjoying this car because even though it's a bit chilly, the weather is stunning and with the roof down, which in a convertible, the roof should always be down. It doesn't matter what's going on, always took the roof down. You get all of this magic. It's like, come on. Woo. What's this coming the other way now? We've got a Ferrari, come on eyesight. 
It's a Cali tea. Go on, lad. What a day. Oh, I'm loving Lambo life. I don't know if I recognize myself. Oh. feel like I'm going the wrong way. Did you see that line of Lamborghinis? That was ridiculous. A gaggle of Lambos, I'm gonna call it. I mean, it's the it's the one problem with going to a supercar event in a supercar is that you, there's quite a high risk that you're gonna end up parking next to an identical car and you would have spent 200 odd, 300 odd thousand pounds and be like, oh, it's not that unique, my car. But I mean, I mean, maybe that's not an issue. It's not an issue for me because Oh, this car's free, I didn't pay £200,000, so I'm just loving life and seeing other Lambos and be like, yeah, hey bro, Lambo crew. I've never been in the Lambo crew, but today I am, and I've actually ended up in a kind of secondary mini convoy. The reason why we saw such an insane lineup of Lambos is today's like supercar club day at Salon Privé. So Lambo owners club, Ferrari owners club, Lotus owners club, Bentley owners club, etc. They all they all turn up and put on a big display, uh, which is going to be mega for someone like me because I get to nerd out and be like, wow! But as I say, if you came in a super bespoke Aventador SVJ and then there were like 10 others, would you feel a bit disappointed or would you think that's cool? I don't know, I'm, I've never been in that position. So. I haven't even got inside Salon Privé yet. The main event takes place in there, in Blenheim Palace, another stunning venue. But yes, I keep getting distracted because look, two Project 8 Jaguars. Um, now, somebody just walked over and told me these are both for sale. So he's ruined my day because I'm now like, how can I buy them? Obviously, I always hark on about that's noisy. Uh, I always hark on about uh, Project 7. When I see a Project 8, I'm like, oh, maybe this is the route to go. Firstly, they're more affordable because they're so misunderstood and only available in left-hand drive. Therefore, here in the UK, people are a bit like, meh. Um, you can get them under 100K if you really, you know, shop around. But yeah, super cool to see. And then, yeah, classic Lambo owner there. Uh, trying to get some attention. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, let's head inside. Now I realise this may come across as a little, a little spoiled, a little, I don't know what, out of touch, superficial. Anyway, as amazing as the event is inside, because I'm attending kind of at the end of the week, the event's already been going for four days, I've kind of seen everything that's in there already online. It's the problem with social media in general. So come back out to the car park because, as I mentioned, all the owners clubs are here and I'm kind of more excited or intrigued to see what cars are in the car park. That's going to the sort of surprise element is going to be and that's the thing is, you know, Social media does ruin some of these events because unless you're there day one, you know what you're going to see. So yeah, come out to the car park, browse around and see what's uh, lurking. So the first group is the McLaren Owners Club and I can see lots of interesting cars here, 600 LTs, uh, 570Ss, many of the sports series cars. Actually there was well, some 720Ss and things like that, there's a kind of crazy spec 600 LT at the back. But I'm actually going to spin around because, well, it's a DBS going up there, but the Aston Owners Club is getting me a little bit more excited, I've got to be honest, you guys all know I love an Aston. Look at this old Vantage, what a beast, that is a stunning spec. Many V12 Vantages knocking around, a real sort of variety. I'm going to come down here though, I think there's a special edition V12 Vantage S. Now they did so many of these special editions, I do lose track. This could be the Spitfire edition though, which I was obsessed with though. Stunning in this dark green, lots of yellow elements and you can see, yes, there you go, the tan interior with in the uh, in the headrest. It's got that kind of Spitfire stitching. Really cool to see, incredibly rare. Loads of other bits that you've got with this car. You can see sort of custom uh, dials and elements on the dash there. Super nuts. 
moving on. There you go, another V12, two V12 Vantage S's, plenty of them around. Let's see what else we can spy. Casual Vanquish Zagato, that's the shooting brake. Unbelievably rare and, well, insanely valuable. Now, without Paul Wallace, I'm definitely gonna miss some important Lambos here. So if you spot anything which I'm not talking about, please let me know in the comments below. Many Gallardos, Murcielagos, Aurus. Performances, etc. But yeah, they're gonna be some special editions which I just I'm not gonna recognize. I don't my knowledge of Lambos not so great, but lots of nice cars and nice examples. Look at the yellow on this Mercia Largo. It's got a crazy sort of pearlescent tint to it. There's elements of green, yellow, white, I don't really know what's going on. Cool to see. I'm, I'm thinking that's a yeah, old oh, manual. So that's a Merce Lug. I don't think that's an LP640. Coming back, the craziness continues. Very nice colour. Is that the same as Archie's? I think it might be. Got an insanely modified looking Gallardo. I don't think it's an STS. I think it's just been modified and it's pretty nuts to see, as is that Performante with the green wrap. Um, a couple of SVs. I think there's an SVJ or something down there. Yeah, mental, but unfortunately... Oh, is that a Mura? No. No, it's not. <laughs> Porsche Owners Club. Let's see if anyone's bought a new GT3. The very lovely 718 Spider there. There's the old 901.2 GT3. More Caymans and Spiders knocking around. I don't see a new shape 992 generation GT3 yet. Uh, also the Lotus Club over there on the right. <laughs> it's just a bit cooler and more exciting out here. I know I shouldn't say that, but I just find that it is. Very nice 3RS, Visac pack. Ooh, is that a 997 Gen 1 GT3? That's nice in the, in the green. Very cool. Yeah, I found that, it's another GT4. 996 GT3 Gen 1, another GT4. <laughs> the GT4s can do it. Oh, and here's a 2RS down here. Oh, as well, some classics. Oh, and the Morgan. Oh, and the Maserati owners club. Go on, Maserati. Uh, but yeah, look at this 2RS. What a stunner. Very nice to see. I do still love the, the look of the 718 Spider. Didn't necessarily bond with the car when I drove it. But uh, yeah, as a thing to look at. Oh, killer. Well, a short but very sweet visit to Salon Privé. Uh, absolutely mega cars on display inside and yes, as I just showed you in the car park. But I now need to leave um, because, well, I did explain it at the beginning of the video. I've now got to go to Podium Place to Perla to pick up some Cynthia Glass coffee for tomorrow's podcast event. But what I didn't tell you is then this afternoon I'm working at another event uh, with Nissan and I can't, I can't vlog that, I can't film that. So... I think now is a good time to wrap up this kind of introductory video to the Huracan Evo Spider. More content on this car coming on a little tiny, tiny little mini UK road trip where I'll get to exploit it, use it, experience it a ton more. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you have and make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.